now that we've seen how to use a Lagrangian to solve a problem, let's turn back to the question of sort of what is this Lagrange multiplier doing? So remember, if we're maximizing utility, we're going to have a function that looks like this. If we set up our Lagrangian correctly, uh, and we're doing our sort of example problem that we've been going through. Uh, we take the partial derivative with respect to each of the variables and we get something like this. So the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to f is the marginal utility of f plus lambda, I'm sorry, it should be minus, minus lambda times pf. The partial derivative with respect to s is the marginal utility of, with respect to s minus lambda times ps. And then the last one gives us the budget constraint right back. So as I've, I guess I'll just say briefly, the next step then is to set these all equal to zero. And from here I've solved the system and I normally focus on how we cancel out the lambdas and uh, it's just sort of this tool that we use to get to the first order conditions, then we throw it away, and we really care about the amount of, you know, the person's actual choices. But what is this thing doing? And to get some intuition, let's actually solve for the lambda for once. So uh, here we get that uh, marginal utility of f equals lambda pf. This one tells us the marginal utility of s is equal to lambda times ps. And if we solve for lambda, kind of run out of room over here, so I'll say over here, we get that lambda is equal to the marginal utility of food divided by pf. But it's also equal to the marginal utility of shelter divided by ps. And these things are equal to each other. We kind of showed you can rearrange that you get the condition that the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the um, ratio of prices what is this is there any intuition about this and it turns out there actually is okay so what is lambda lambda is basically an exchange rate of utility per dollar if we're talking about this context. If I give you an extra dollar, how much utility can you get for it, okay? Why is it the case? Because if I give you one dollar, the amount of, you can increase your utility by using that to purchase food or shelter, okay? If you use it to purchase food, the amount of extra utility you get is equal to uh, the marginal utility of that extra food, and then the amount of food you can buy is one dollar divided by the price of food. Okay, so we multiply it, the marginal utility, by the fraction of food that you can get with that dollar. And that's what this is right here. Okay, one divided, one dollar divided by PF is how much extra food you get, and we multiply that by the marginal utility that that food, that one extra piece of food gets you. That's how it translates into utility. And it's also saying that you could also spend the money on shelter. And if you did that, the amount of extra shelter you could buy is $1 divided by PS, the price of shelter. And we multiply that by the marginal utility you would have gotten if you got that extra unit of shelter. Okay, So it's telling you how much extra utility you get for a dollar if you spend it in either place. And the reason they're equal to each other is because if you're maximizing utility, then you can't... Uh, there's no way to improve your utility and get more by moving a dollar from one place to the other, okay? So if they were not equal, that meant that if you took a dollar away from, say, uh, buying food, you'd lose the marginal utility of food divided by the price. But if you shifted that over to uh, buying shelter, the amount you gain would offset your loss, okay? And only when they're equal is it not possible to, uh, to basically increase utility by shifting money around. Now, if the lambda is telling us the value of uh, the, you know, the extra utility you get per dollar, then you can kind of see here that it is a measure of how, how important is this constraint, okay? It measures, uh, 
sort of the intensity of the constraint. If it's really high, that means that if we could relax the constraint, if we could give you a little bit more money so that you had a little bit more choices, your utility would go up a lot, okay? So the money is a really binding constraint and you can't, you can't get the utility you want because this constraint is really binding you tightly. If the utility actually fell all the way down to zero, that would mean the constraint has become irrelevant. You've already achieved the most utility uh, you could want and extra money uh, you doesn't actually get you any extra utility because you already have all the food and shelter you want. We've kind of assumed that that never happens, but remember the Lagrangian is a general uh, tool. It's not only designed for economists trying to maximize utility, and so there are situations where uh, sort of these non-satiation assumptions don't apply. In general, sometimes we call uh, the Lagrange multiplier a shadow price. It's telling us about how uh, this constraint is effect is sort of like it's converting like dollars into utility, and so it's sort of like the utility price, the price of utility in some sense. Okay, uh, so that's what this Lagrange multiplier is doing. Okay, that's sort of what its interpretation uh, can be, and it's it's interesting, uh, I think, but. It's sort of abstract and it's not something we can easily observe in the real world compared to people's actual decisions about how much food and shelter to buy. So normally when we ask you to solve the utility maximization problem using a Lagrangian, you're gonna solve it uh, and find the amount that this person consumes, but you're not then going to, uh, really, we're not really gonna care about the Lagrange multiplier, so you don't really need to find it.